this is angels, beggars, and castaway things, A Forager's Journey Home. It's a book that I wrote together with my co-author, Max. For a dog, Max is quite an accomplished writer. Uh, there is a lot of work involved uh, correcting his spelling and punctuation, and Max doesn't capitalize proper names, um, but much of the content of Angels, Beggars, and Castaway Things is Max's original work. The book is kind of a, of a mixture of different things. Uh, some very serious writing, uh, essays and philosophy and current events and such, uh, mixed together with a lot of very humorous, lighthearted material, uh, little stories and vignettes, um, a picture of uh, my life, Max's life, uh, our family's life here in uh, rural uh, Connecticut uh, on a sort of a 21st century homestead. Uh, I thought I might read for you uh, a story that um, you might appreciate. Uh, I'm interested to see what you think. Uh, the book is in journal form, and each entry is is dated. So this entry is dated June 7th, 2016, 10.10 10 p.m. I picked up a hooker today. I'm making an assumption, but from all appearances and the questions she asked, I think she's probably turning tricks to survive. You hardly ever see a woman hitchhiking. I'd seen this woman on the same spot a week or so ago, maybe in her 40s, uh, looking battle-worn. I'd been driving the opposite way. When I came back from my errand, she was gone. Today I pulled over, removed some items from the passenger seat, and she got in. She asked if I was going up Route 32. Yes, I said. Uh, where are you going? Eagleville. I just need to get something to eat and drink. I can take you to Eagleville, I said. As we drove along, she asked, uh, where are you from? I named my town. Where are you going? she asked. I was going home, but I'll be happy to take you to Eagleville, I said. Do you live alone? she asked. No, I've got a family, I said. How many? she asked. There are five of us, I said. It's nice to have family, she said. I thought of the times I'd been alone and how I'd suffered. I thought of what a blessing it is to be among people you deeply care about. I'd be terribly lonely without my family, I said. I thought, what a tactless thing to say to a homeless woman. Well, I can't take the words back, can I? I hope I didn't hurt her. I've got family too, she said. It's just, there are some things. I tried to make small talk, but there was no connection. An exchange of comments, but not really a conversation. She asked if there's a mirror in the sunshade. I flipped it down to show her. She checked her makeup and hair and asked, is it supposed to rain? I checked earlier to see if I would need to water the plantings so I was able to recite the next several hours' prediction. Where do you want me to drop you off? I asked as we neared Eagleville. Eagleville Pizza, she said. I think that's what it's called. College Pizza, I corrected her. It's not far from the University of Connecticut. I'll give you some money so you can get a good meal. 
Thank you. God bless you, she said. Her words were distant, flat, an empty recitation of a memorized line. She seemed spent, gone, emotionally shut off, as though a freight load of trouble had buried her feeling heart. We drove past where I remembered the pizza place to be. There are some places further up ahead, she said. The next town is pretty far, I said. Where do you want me to drop you? There's a bar and a pizza place and a Dunkin' Donuts. I didn't like the idea of dropping her off at a bar. We continued driving. She pulled a flip phone, cell phone, from her purse and fiddled with it. I was surprised to see the phone. We continued, Mom, she said. It's me. Dad tried to call earlier. What's wrong? She said a few more sentences and put the phone back in her purse. It took a while for me to figure out. The cell phone is a prop. There was no phone call, no mom, no dad. Just a dead flip phone she'd picked up somewhere. We approached Willington. It's on the left, she said, the pizza place where all the college kids go. I saw a little row of shops and a fairly upscale looking pizza parlor. It had a carved and painted wooden sign with gilded letters, Willington Pizza. I pulled into the parking lot and pulled out the only cash in my pocket, a $20 bill. One of my errands had been to pick up a 20 for Arlene to cover half of a restaurant tab from yesterday. One of the grown children had visited and Arlene had gone somewhere for lunch with her, Natasha and Maria. God bless you, she said flatly. Later, I figured out she would lied about wanting to go to Eagleville. If she told me she wanted to go to Willington, it would have been too far to ask. So she finessed the ride by asking me to take her to Eagleville and then stringing me along the rest of the way. As I drove home, I thought about two things. Where could I stop? buy a small item of food and get twenty dollars cash back on my debit card. It wouldn't do to go home and tell Arlene I'd given her twenty dollars to a prostitute. Two. Had I done anything for that woman or had I only rubbed salt in an open wound? Finally I concluded I did what I could if my thoughtless words, instead of consoling, had made her feel more isolated and lonely, perhaps that was what she needs to feel. If she's ever to escape her situation, some feeling inside will have to motivate her. But I would never presume to try something like that on purpose. In any case, she's likely developed a thick skin I'm inclined to think the net result of my gesture is she got a ride and twenty dollars. Here's a prayer for a forlorn woman far away from home. Teardrops fell on Mama's note when I read the things she wrote. She said, we miss you, hon, we love you. Come on home. All these years and all these roads never led me back to you. I'm always 500 miles. Away from home Away from home Away from home Always out here on my own I'm still 500 miles Away from home